Another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained through faith, by grace, not of works, lest anyone should uh, boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest and made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecy, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints that are watching in, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's go ahead and pick up at uh, Exodus chapter uh, 24. <clears throat> So we finished off last week, just to recap, we finished off last week, Exodus chapter 23, <clears throat> and uh, that was the last of the commandments that the Most High God spoke from the mount onto Moses. Remember, he started off with what, what we typically call the Ten Commandments, the Ten Words, the Ten Devarim, all right? So he spoke, spoke ten sayings, excuse me. Um, from the top of the mountain, and it was thunder, and all the people got scared. They backed up, and they were like, listen, Moses, this whole time, since we've been in Egypt and came to the wilderness, you've been talking to God, we ain't talked to God, you just told him what he said. Now we hearing the man, he making all this darn noise, and feel like he's going to kill us. You tell us what he say, and then bring it back to us. Most High God said, they will. He said, I, hope, I wish they keep this fear the whole time. All right? So, then, after that, he invited Moses up. All right? Moses went up to the top of the mount. And so everything that we've been reading over the last three, three weeks, we've been reading what Mo the Most High God spoke to Moses. All right? So he completed it based off of what we read last week. That was the completion. So now we're going to read it in chapter 24 of what Moses did after uh, he completed This is Exodus chapter 24, verse 1. <clears throat> And he said unto Moses, Come up unto the Lord, thou and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship ye afar off. And Moses alone shall come near to the Lord. All right, so he said, All of you, y'all come on up. Remember, seventy, who remembers where that seventy came from? <clears throat> from, uh, from uh, when his father in law told him. All right, so remember. Remember, Jethro, he came in, he is like, man, this thing that you do. Remember, Joseph, Moses, he was judging all the people, right? He was judging all the people. And he had all the people. Remember, you got like a million people out there. He's like, he's sitting there judging them and trying to decide, you know, who was right and who was wrong and all these little cases, everything petty to, to serious crimes, right? So he had to figure all the stuff out. Jethro saw he was like, man, this stuff that you take on this way too much. You know what I'm saying? This thing is not good for you. He was like, this is what you need to do. You need to take you some reputable men. You know what I'm saying? And let them help you judge. And only let them bring the cases that are really, really difficult to you. So Moses took them up on the offer. The Most High God confirmed it onto them. And 70 men were chosen of those groups. So that's the 70 elders that came there, right? So they came, 70 of them. And they worshiped the Most High God from afar off. Moses was the only one that was allowed to go close to the Most High God. Remember, the scene is still the same. They had Mount Sinai or Mount Horeb. Right? And, and smoke and fires coming out. So these 70 men were allowed to come up to the mount. They couldn't go too close, though. And then after that, Moses was allowed to go ahead and go near to where God does. The rest of them had to, had to uh, worship from afar. Keep reading. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come up nigh, neither shall the people go up with him. Uh huh. And Moses came and told the people, 
all the words of the Lord and all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words which the Lord had said, we will do. All right, so notice it says, Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord. So everything that we just got done reading, he went back and he related on to the people. Right? And then they, after they heard it, they said, everything that you just said, we'll do. Right? Out of their own mouth, they said it. We may have missed it, but before we got this, about four or five weeks ago, when we was in Exodus chapter 19, they said that again in chapter 19. They was like, look, whatever the Most High God say, we'll do. Right? Watch this. Keep going. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord and rose up early in the morning and built an altar under the hill mm -hmm. and 12 pillars according to the 12 tribes of Israel. Mm -hmm. And he sent young men of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in the basin, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. Mm -hmm. And he took the book of the covenant and read it in the audience of the people. And they said, all that the Lord has said, we will do and be obedient. Mm -hmm. and Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, behold, the blood of the covenant which the Lord has made with you concerning all these words. All right, so then he took the blood after he made the sacrifice and he sprinkled it on the people. All right, because Hebrews tells us, we don't have to get it, but Hebrews tells us without blood, there can't be a covenant. All right, there has to be a sacrifice. There's no remission of sin without blood. That was part of the covenant. All right, so part of having the covenant is you have to have blood with it. So he sprinkled the blood from the sacrifice on the people, saying, This is the sacrifice that confirms this covenant. All right. Watch what the people do. Watch, uh, watch, uh, watch, uh, Matthew chapter 27. It's Matthew chapter 27. Give me verse, uh, 11. It's Matthew chapter 27, verse 11. Yahushua stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? Mm -hmm. And Yahushua said unto him, You said it. He's like, You said it? You know what I'm saying? What you talking about, boy? You said it? Keep going. And when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Mm -hmm. Then said Pilate unto him, Hearest thou not how many things they witness against you? All right? He's like, Oh, you don't hear all the stuff that these people witness against you? He said, hear thou not all the things that these people witness against you? Right? That means that they were accusing him of things. There are people saying, no, I saw him do this. No, I saw him do that. Right? They all had, had some type of saying or some type of story about something that he did. Right? Watch this. TJ, put his jacket on. Go find it. And he answered him to never a word, insomuch that the governor marveled greatly. Now at the at that feast, the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. Uh huh. And they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Mm -hmm. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you? Mm -hmm. Barabbas or Yahushua, which is called Messiah? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. Right? So he is looking at it. He is like, look, I released on to you this man named Barabbas, or I, I released on to you Yahushua, who they call the Messiah. Right? He is like, who do you want me to release on to? You just let me know. Right? Keep going. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, have, you, have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. Mm-hmm. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Yahushua. Mm -hmm. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? He said, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? In other words, which one of these two boys would you want, want me to let go? Right? Which one should I set free? Which one? Whether of the twain? All right, let's see. They said Barabbas. All right, it's like, go ahead and let Barabbas free. Now y'all should go ahead and let the criminal free. Don't don't let y'all sure free the one that ain't did nothing. 
You know, so you let him free that mess up everything we got going on. We got to teach him a lesson. He walk around talking like he knows something. Right? Let's see. And the governor said, what? And Pilate said unto them, what you don't think I that do? you don't think that you think that's so different than what we see today? You think that thing is so different right now than, than what we see today? You see everybody that that do something wrong and say something stupid. Those are the those are the ones that's, that's glorified, right? You got darn stripper is the best rapper in the world right now, only because she a stripper, right? All the rappers that talking about how much, how many drugs they take and all that stuff, they the ones selling records now, or allegedly, like whatever people do with these streams, right? You know, they the ones getting money and selling shows out and all that stuff. That's what everybody want to hear. You know what I'm saying? You got anybody? Let a rapper come up here talking about something positive. Talking about, that. nobody want to hear. It. Nobody want to hear that foolishness. That's crazy. You think it's different? They said, no, nah, go ahead and give us Barabbas. There's these people saying give us Barabbas every day. Every day. Go to one of these churches. Just be like, man, you know what? I'm never going to do anything wrong ever again. I'm never going to see it. Just, just stand flat-footed and just talk to the back. I'm never going to sin again. They don't look at you, now, nah, brother, now, nah, brother. All of us going to sin. And then watch you stand on. They're going to be nice at first. Stand up. No, nah, you sin. You know what I'm saying? You sin that time. You a sinner if you sin. I don't want to be a sinner. I'm done sinning. Ain't never going to happen again. Just stand up. They'd be like, no, nah, see, that's legalistic. Right? They don't start trying to condemn you. That's legalistic. For you saying that you don't want to do nothing wrong, they're going to say, that's condemned. Let a, let a game banger walk in that thing. Pants sagging and everything. He didn't walk in the front. That's they doing altar call. Won't you come? If you just feel God tugging on you, I just want everybody to close your eyes. Everybody pray now. I feel somebody in this direction. Then let a, then let a game banger just stand up in that direction. Got a butt in the darn ear. Right there in the, in the middle of the church with a blunt in the eye, I guarantee the whole church drop it. Ah! Ah! Do all that. They're going to be happy. They never going to see. It's because the whole time we looking for Barabbas. We look at this stuff. A lot of times you read this stuff and be like, oh, no, nah, see, that's, you know what I'm saying? Look, that's just a story. Right? That's just a story. I don't know what's happening. That's that ain't no story. People do it every single day. We see people just watch TV. Look, look at the type yeah, of people that's glorified. Look at the type of content that's chosen over the other content. Eat. Right? You look at the movies that, that win awards and, the, and that sell out. You know, so you have a nice, wholesome, nice little movie. You know what I'm saying? And then you're going to see these little raunchy girls trip and all this stuff sell out. Right? What's that movie, uh, Jack Butt? You know what I'm saying? The white people <laughs> acting crap. They love this stuff. American pop. All these things, all these things is like crazy. All this, all this stuff, it's just complete sin. Right? You have a nice little wholesome movie. That thing don't do nothing. In that term. That thing don't do nothing. As soon as they come out, a man that got acquitted of rape. You know what I'm saying? He got acquitted of rape. And then they want to talk about him. They, you, you were raped. You raped that girl. He got acquitted of it. When was the last time you seen a black man in Pennsylvania in the 1980s get acquitted of rape at an all-white school with a white girl? Who gets acquitted for something that they didn't do in no condition and you a black man? That's crazy. I ain't listening to you. I ain't got nothing to do. But they, they bring that thing. They wait until right before the movie drops. They bring that to all these news stations. All these NBC, all these news stations. And then guess what happened? You got Matt Lauer. What is it? Lauer? Lauer. Lauer. Whatever his name is. They say he got a button at the bottom of his desk. He press a button, his door locked. And all these women come out now that are talking about he's been molesting us, he's been messing with us, he's been doing sexually inappropriate stuff with us. This man in the building, in this building, so tell me NBC don't know about it. He, he installed his own button in his desk? No, they installed it for him because he's making them money. And he probably still going to get paid. He probably gonna still give him thirty million dollars and tell him, okay, we gotta let you go over here. You know, here's a nice check. Severance, nice little thirty million dollars severance check. That's what they did to Bill O'Reilly. Every day, these people telling us, give us Barabbas. They ain't gonna let no righteous man get on TV tell y'all what it is. Give me a TV show, I'll take it to death. You can uninstall the button, I'll take it. Let me put the camera. I'll make sure that I'll line this whole nation up. They kick me out real quick. Give us Barabbas. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? No. 
Every single day, that's what we look at. This stuff ain't foreign. This stuff ain't different. You know what I'm saying? We look at the same stuff we're looking at today. These people ain't changed. None of these people change. None of our people change either. That's right. We the worst ones picking up this, this garbage stuff. Still looking. You got people. You got Jada Pickett still crying about the Golden Globes and all that stuff. What you crying with these people give you? Golden Globes. Don't you know you can make your own Golden Globe? Make it the Black Globe. <laughs> you know they'd be coming for it. They gonna spend their whole time trying to stop us from doing it. And next thing you know, they be like, "All right, we want a black globe too." Everything moved because of us. We Hebrews. These people model their whole. You look at your calendar. What time? What day did the week start? Sunday. You think these people came up with that on their own? Most like God told them seven days, seven days, and six days rather. Six days I created the earth, and I rested <coughs> on the seventh. How you think they got a seven day week? This whole world is modeled after our, pe our people. You think all of a sudden when it comes to the Golden Globe, it stopped? They stopped wanting to be like us? He made us a peculiar people. And this is in disobedience. What? How much more have we obeyed the man? Ain't listen to these people. They still saying give us Barabbas. And they keep going. People make a fool out of us. Father said unto them, What shall I do then with Yahushua, which is called the Messiah? Mm -hmm. and they all said unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why? What evil has he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. Mm -hmm. And when Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. He said, I'm innocent of the blood of this just person. It's an innocent man. Right? He said, It's an innocent man. And I ain't got nothing to do with his blood. Y'all spill his blood, that ain't got nothing to do. He best giving them a symbol. He's saying, this is on y'all. I just offered y'all a man who is, who is guilty, right? He's a criminal. And I said, which one do y'all want me to set free? The innocent man or the criminal? Y'all chose for the criminal to be set free and for me to kill this innocent man. He is like, that's on y'all. I, I ain't got nothing to do with this fool, right? Back up. Keep going. See ye to it. Mm -hmm. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on all our children. He said, he said, they said, what now? His blood be on us and on all our children. They don't even know what they're talking about. They ain't running their mouth just being evil. They ain't know what they're talking about. That's just like Moses when he just sprinkled that blood. Right? We watched Moses. Moses, he did the sacrifice and he spoke to the people, gave them all the word. And after that, he sprinkled the blood on the people. He said, This is the this is the covenant. By them calling, killing Yahushua and choosing them to be killed, that's what they said. Most High God had to set them up. Right? Most High had to set them up. They'd be like, man, his blood be on us and all our, all our children. Right? That's the only way. And they evil, the Most High God still trying to look for a way. Well, if y'all repent, let me make sure y'all be taken care of. Man, these people don't got no God like ours. All these people God is in the middle. All these people God live on darn lightning bolts and all this. These people with God, they need sophisticated. You know, then you look at that guy, they, they fight each other over trivial stuff. You let these stories, they got, they fight each other over trivial stuff. Aphrodite slept with my son. That's your darn auntie, boy. <laughs> Nasty butts. And they sit there, you know what I'm saying, I, I cursed, uh, what's the name? What's the one that, uh, it was one of them that, uh, wasn't it Achilles? You know what I'm saying? Wasn't it Achilles? He is the one, you know what I'm saying? He got cursed. He was, you know what I'm saying? He had something tighter than he got cursed. That wasn't Achilles. Was it Poseidon? One of them, you know what I'm saying? One of them got cursed, you know what I'm saying? Then they got, you know what I'm saying? They, got, they, had, to, they had to go down to the earth, you know what I'm saying? Like a regular person. No, 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 not Hades. No, not Hercules. Hercules was just a son, you know what I'm saying? When you kids mess around, you know, you got a guy messing around with the, with the humans. No, that, that's how Hercules came about. Uh, it might have been Hermes or something like that. I forgot. It was one of them, you know what I'm saying? He got to do that stuff. He got cursed because, you know what I'm saying? Just because, you know what I'm saying? He messing around doing stuff. He ain't got nothing, no business to it. He was a god, though. That these people got to that. That these people got. They are there bickering and fire guys. They ain't got no equal. Who gonna who gonna who gonna curse him? You better shut up. You better run your darn mouth. You better shut up, boy. You know what I'm saying? I'll let you think you a guy. I'll light your darn butt up. Our guy's sophisticated. He let all this stuff go the whole time. Y'all making a fool. If you look at any of their books, any religious book, including the Muslim book, who try to copy itself off of ours, which one gonna content, condemn its own people? Which one going to take a people out, say that y'all are particular people, 
And then in the next darn book, say, y'all but standing here in the wilderness. Right? Y'all but saying, y'all are evil people. I kill every one of y'all. What book keep it as real as ours? I mean, find one. Anyone. Just, I mean, just show me where the Buddhist is like, all right, for sure. You know what I'm saying? I pick, no, the rest of these books trying to sell you something. Everybody, they said, that ain't our book. Our book's like, nah, you know what I'm saying? Some of y'all destined for hell. Tell me our book's gonna say it. Tell me, I mean, some of y'all death. He said, he got vessels, you know what I'm saying? Vessels for destruction and vessels for honor. Some of y'all destined for hell. Some of y'all ain't, ain't gonna be nothing. I mean, you can try it. Some of y'all ain't that. What book gonna tell you? No, nah, that's an unpardonable sin. You blasting the Holy Ghost. You, you might as well just go ahead and call it quits. You good. <laughs> you ain't coming back. You know what I'm saying? You good. You good. Hey, nah, I ain't even gonna forget that one. What book gonna tell you that? That's why these Christians have such a hard time with it. They got to hide it. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, well, you know, you know, we don't read that part. They have to, because otherwise, it's like, how do you explain it? That's why you go, you go, and you have these people playing jokes on people, and they they cover up the Bible, wrap it in the Quran, they start reading the Bible to people. They be like, look at what the Quran say, and they reading the Bible. And these Christians, these Christians looking, at, oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's that Allah. They don't know who they listening to. They never heard it. They never been introduced to the book. I'm talking to a girl at work today. I'm looking like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Let me tell you about the feast. She, you know what I'm saying? Well, you don't tell that Christians. What are you? This, that, and other. I was like, oh, don't worry. I'm a disciple. What does that mean? What do you? I heard, I heard you have Bible study. I have Bible study. Do you do believe in the Bible or the Quran? Or I just told you I have Bible study. You don't sit here and ask me I believe in the Quran. You know, I just told you I have Bible study. <laughs> you people ain't got no attentive darn listening. You know what I'm saying? So I'll be looking, I'll be like, you know what I'm saying? Then you good. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you. Oh, I gotta you, tell people I'm not a Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> I mean, I gotta be every darn thing. I was like, this ain't a shame. These people that came and stole the glory of our most high God. Now you look like anything that's right. They think you crazy. Crazy. That don't make no darn sense. Like, I'm just here telling them, I'm like, yeah, so, you know, these holidays, you know, they all got they, they you know, they, they roots and whatever they come from. It's that another. She, yeah, 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 okay, I know. Right? That's, that's crazy to me. I saw, I saw a Christian pastor on a Christian television show tell these people that Christmas is fake. While celebrating it, though. Christmas tree in the background. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, this is the, the height of insanity. Y'all watching. This is a Christmas, I mean, a Christian channel. You got a Christian pastor, and he just told you this Christmas, Christian holiday is paid with a Christmas tree in the background. And y'all good. That thing don't hit y'all. It don't even, it don't even, Y'all ain't gotta dodge that thing. That thing just that just, just go right through you. Like, okay, keep going. You know what I'm saying? That thing kills me. I'm sitting there telling her, I'm like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? The days I celebrate, you know what I'm saying? They coming up, you know what I'm saying? In the March, you know what I'm saying? I'm celebrating Purim. I tell her a little bit about Purim. You know what I'm saying? After that, I'm celebrating Passover. Tell her a little bit about Passover. After that, you know what I'm saying? Then, you know what I'm saying? You got the week of unleavened bread. Then you gotta count seven weeks from there. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying that, that's when Lynn just talking about May. You know what I'm saying? That's called the Feast of Weeks. Saying same day that same day that the, the, the apostle got the spirit, the gift of the spirit from the Most High God. You know, see, so she's sitting there with her mouth there. I'm like, oh, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, you know, I'm saying you good. And after that, you know, what I'm saying the seventh month, this land us around September. You know, what I'm saying that's gonna uh, that's gonna uh, put us in uh, Day of Atonement. Then we got to celebrate Day of Atonement. Then the end gathering. The end gathering represents the end for us. That represents where all of us come in and we dwell with y'all too. You know, they like when you talk about Jesus. You know, so you can talk about Jesus, y'all. Oh, yes. Yes, you know what I'm saying? I was looking like I was like, I was like, I just looked at it. she just sitting there saying, You putting me to shame. I haven't heard any of this. I told her, I was like, no, you ain't gotta be ashamed by yourself. You know what I'm saying? It's a pastor. Right? You got a pastor. He teach the Bible, don't he? At your church, you're a Christian, right? You teach the Bible, don't he? You said you were concerned whether I believed in the Bible. You believe in the Bible, don't you? All that's in the Bible. Oh, all that I just talked about you is in the Bible. You never heard of it, have you? All of it's in the Bible. Whole time they saying give it. They, I bet she'd go. She ain't gonna come here. I bet she ain't gonna come here and sit. I bet she'd go to that church though. Christian church gives Barabbas. Whole time, everything he do, these people saying give us Barabbas, and they know they ain't in nothing. They know they not being taught nothing. When was the last time you been taught the truth? When was the last time you gotta go to one of these Christian pastors and say, uh, can you explain this to me in the Bible? That's crazy. I wish I would hear one of y'all talk about go to the Christian back. Can you explain this to me in the Bible? That's crazy. What they gonna explain? You hear the truth, you don't need nobody to explain it. You're gonna have to get it yourself, or you're gonna go to the man of God that's teaching it. You know these people ain't teaching no darn truth. 
Only time you got to go to somebody else to teach you something because they you not being taught nothing. And they know they not being taught. This whole life, everything that we go through is give us Barabbas. This is what we've been fighting against. Give us Barabbas. Line these people up. Where we at? <clears throat> then released he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scourged Yahushua, he delivered him to be crucified. Give me Hebrews chapter 10. Mm -hmm. Let me show y'all something. This is Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 23. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For it is faithful that promise. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Not That's what we have to do. Not That's forsaking it. the assembly of the, ourselves together. All right, that thing's important for us. A lot of, a lot of times we don't see the, we don't see the value in that. All right, but it's important for us to provoke ourselves. What did they provoke ourselves into? <clears throat> love and the good works, right? Yeah. Love all right? and the good works. All right, you gotta provoke ourselves into love and the good works. That boy red there, ain't he? All them boys look like that boy. Look like that man. That's what's happening. <laughs> yeah, it's left. My hair but it's like me at all. That's gay. All them things. Every, every, every one of them. You can slap a beard on That's him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> him. Legit. 100%. You know what I'm saying? That thing's like. But uh, you look at it. You know what I'm saying? It's like. We need to we need to be able to we need to be able to provoke each other into love and good works. Right? We should be able to come around each other and be like, you know what? I gotta do a little bit better. Right? I gotta go a little bit harder for the most high God. Right? I can't make those same mistakes no more. Right? That's what being together ought to, ought to do for us. And then the next part is say, don't forsake the assembling together of ourselves. We know how it is. We get to just, I mean, all of us, we just sit back and be honest. Once we get isolated and we get by ourselves, that's when the temptation comes. That's when stuff gets darn hard. We don't get to see you spend too much time away. Man, that thing, that thing get hard. What you, what, what you going to do? Right? That thing is important for us. We can't forsake it. Right? We got to make sure we stay, you know what I'm saying, stay stay on it, stay provoked, and, and stay, <coughs> stay consistent. That's what the Most High God is looking for, consistency. How can you stay on it and stay with it? I just need you to stay on it, stay with it to the end. If you can do that, the Most High God can do something with it. All right, keep going. As the, uh, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. All right? He said exhorting one, one another and so much the more. Exhorting men is calling each other out. Giving each other direction, pointing out the right way. All right? He said, so much the more. Did he say do it loud? I mean, I mean, we know each other so well. Terrence is just Terrence. You can't tell him nothing. This, that, and other. So I don't even talk to him no more. That's crazy. Every time me and my brother talk, we talk like yeah, that's what you should do. You know what I'm saying? This is how you would, this is how you should. Yeah, you know how that goes. Now I feel like you know you should have handled it that way. Now I'll tell you, I think you should. What are we gonna stop exhorting each other for? That's crazy. That don't make no sense. Because I know you. I'm supposed to be like, nah, that's just Terrence. Please. That's just Terrence. That thing ain't that thing. You go ahead and walk up to the most I got. That's just me, God. But <laughs> turn your butt around. What's wrong with you? We ain't got no time for just you. Whole, whole reason I came is to get rid of just you. Keep going. Let's see what else we're working with here. For if we sin willfully after that, we have received. Uh oh. He said this. Let me tell you something. Christians see this thing. That thing. That's a heart up here. If you do what? If you sin willfully after that, I mean, they seen. will chop that willfully <clears throat> word up so quick. See, now, it's a difference between a sin and a willful sin. A willful sin is like, I mean, I'm just like, and you just sit there and you see him try to explain that thing. Tell me what a willful sin is. Something that you willingly do. 
You know what I'm saying? That what you tell. That what you tell. What you go ahead and explain to me what a willful sin. No, I mean a willful sin. I mean you just keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. Oh, is that right? How many times you ask that? I mean, no, 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 no. I mean, I'm not talking about. No, I just mean. I mean, just like. I mean. You kill somebody. Oh, that's what you got. That's a will for that. Only when you kill people. All right. Right? They gonna light they foot up. It's like, okay. Then then they gonna stop trying to answer. You know they gonna say that. You they gonna stop trying to answer. Listen. Are you trying to say that's when they start asking you questions. Are you trying to say anybody who sin is gonna go to hell automatically? That ain't what I said, bro. <laughs> I'm just telling you what the book say. The book say if anybody you ain't reading for me, I just want to make sure I get it right. This thing like they better. They don't know what's going on when they read this type of stuff. For if we sin willfully after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. There uh-huh. remains no more sacrifice for sin. Yo, but no. Then they're going to tell you, well, what it all comes down to, brother. What they going to tell you? Is love. <laughs> That's all they <laughs> Love covers. Let, let me tell you something. This book, love covers a multitude of sin. It can cover whatever they want. book just told you, if you sin willfully after what? After you have received the knowledge of the, the what? Truth. The no, the what? The knowledge of the truth. The knowledge of the truth. After you receive the knowledge of the truth, if you sin willfully, what happened? There remains no more sacrifice for sin. You can't do nothing about that sin. I don't care how much love you got. That's book. What I'm, what I'm saying. If the man say there remains no more, how am I get try to how how, do, how do, there remains no more? How do I get love and cover it still? Why? Why does it remain no more? Let's see, make sure he, you know, make sure we got the full context. Well, nobody will come and die for these things. And uh, the temple said this is about to be taken away. They call that the double whip. <laughs> and the law would have been, the law would have helped him anyway because that don't take away from sin. Let's read it. What else we got there? But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversary. Mm -hmm. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Right? We just read some of Moses' law. He said anybody who despised his law, they die. Two or three witnesses, that's all it takes. Right? And they die. What else? Of how much sore punishment suppose he shall he be brought worthy who has trodden underfoot the Son of God and has counted the blood of the covenant Wherewith was sanctified and unholy thing, and hath done despite unto the spirit of grace. Alright? So he came down, he came, he said, There remains no more sacrifice because you despise the blood of the covenant. Right? When Herod, when he's sitting there, not Herod, uh, when uh Pontius Pilate, he washed his hands of the thing, he was like, Man, that thing ain't got nothing to do with me. And they said, No, nah, that blood is on us and all our children. Huh? Yeah, he ain't getting by. He ain't getting by either. You know what I'm saying? But then he's like, the blood is on nut and all our children. They didn't know what they were saying. But after they said that, that becomes a blessing on them and a blessing on us. Right? So now if we look at it and we like, you know what I'm saying? The most high God has given us a way out. And then after we receive the truth, and we willfully sin after that, oh, that's done. Right? That's done. He's saying there remains no more sacrifice. Right? This is where people mess up, though. They look at it, they like, oh, my goodness, what am I going to do? I received the truth, and then I kept sinning. That's where you've been wrong. You ain't received nothing. You've been sitting up in the lying church. You ain't received no truth. You've been lying to your whole darn life. How you going to receive some truth? How you receive the truth? Right? People don't know by not believing the Bible, they trap themselves. You believe that. You're supposed to look at that and believe that thing's supposed to scare you when you we well, supposed to, you supposed to read that. You supposed to be like, oh my goodness, there remains no more sacrifice. You supposed to look at it and believe it. I've sinned. I heard some of the Bible, and I sinned afterwards. There remains no more sacrifice. Then you supposed to open up and go to John, First John chapter three. <clears throat> Matter of fact, before you get that, you supposed to go to James four. Get my water. This is James four chapter, uh, James chapter four verse five. Then we go into First John chapter. Reason why the quick Christian can't get that one, but they just won't accept it. They won't accept, but it, it may be a possibility that for them there's no more sacrifice that they keep sinning. 
They won't even, that thing don't even hit. It can't mean what it says, is what they say. It's impossible if that means what it says. Because I know I'm saying. That's what the spirit was telling me. That's what the prophet It don't make, no, it, no it, it's, it's impossible. It's, what you just read it can't be right. It can't be. It's impossible. Because I know I'm saying. Save holy and sanctify. I've been going to church all my life. Yeah, God's not that hard. God know my heart. I'm a good person. I'm decent. Right? They, I mean, they just won't let it. This is what James going to tell you. This is James chapter 4. Give me verse 5. Do you think that the scripture says in vain the spirit that dwells in us lusts to envy? Mm -hmm. But he gives more grace. Wherefore he said, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. What do you think it is when you're sitting there saying, nah, I know, no, what you just read, it can't be right. You think that's, that's humility? You're sitting here calling God a liar. And for what? So that you can be right? You make God wrong so that you can be right. And you think that's humility? These people have no idea what the, the implication of what they're saying. You run your mouth talking about what you said got to be wrong. And the only reason, it don't got to be wrong because I'm reading it wrong, because I can't read, because the word is misspelled on the page, because it's mistranslated. If you give me any of those reasons, now you got to argue. Aside from any of that, it got to be wrong just because you know you say it. So now God wrong because you right. That's crazy. That's insane. Keep going. Watch this. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Mm -hmm. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Mm -hmm. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Mm -hmm. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laugh be afflicted and mourn and, mourn and weep. Let the book hit you. You looking at this book and the whole time you trying to dodge it. Nah, I'm willfully saying they ain't talking about me. Nah, it ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm safe. I'm good. You dodging the whole time. How you gonna mourn? How you gonna cry? Until it hits you and be like, I'm a sinner. There's no more sacrifice for me. That's supposed to make you sad. That's supposed to stop you in your track. That's supposed to break you down. If you do that, listen to what James tell you the most high God to do for you. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. He'll lift you up at that point. You so busy trying not to be hit by the word. Trying not to trying to make sure it don't apply to you. Everything should apply to you, especially when you learn. You assume all of it make you wrong. You do that, then you can do something. Then the most high God will lift you up. Then he'll take you to 1 John chapter 3. He'll teach you something. Some of these people ain't, they ain't, they ain't got enough humility to take this part either. This is the one that'll save them. You just read from Hebrews. Hebrews just condemned all of them. Right? You read it and you don't got to understand it. Hebrews just condemned everybody. Right? You willfully sin after, you after that you receive the knowledge of the truth. You're done. There remains no more sacrifice for sin. If you, if you got humility and you let that break you down, then you're okay, now let me just search it. Look and God please and beg and all that, that's a different attitude. You'll stumble onto something like this. If you're not, you like, oh no, that thing ain't hit me. We good, oh no, that ain't talking about me. Right? That thing don't affect you at all. You read something like this, this ain't gonna affect you either. It's first John chapter four. First John chapter three, give me verse four. This is uh first John chapter three, give me verse six. First John chapter three, give me verse six. Whosoever abides in him sins not. He said, whoever remains in the Messiah does not sin. Whosoever sins has not seen him, neither known him. If you sin, you have never seen him, nor do you know him. Now, if you look at that, a Christian, the same one that was dodging that, that Hebrews, you know what I'm saying? The one that, that ain't going to hit me, they ain't going to hit me. They going to look at that the same way. It ain't going to hit me. Not realizing that if the man tell you, if you sin, you never knew him, is the same, that same line is justifying you before Hebrews. Because now, you never received the knowledge of the truth. If you knew him, you received the knowledge of the truth. He let you know, you never received it because you sinned. Therefore, if you repent from your sin, there remains a sacrifice for you because you didn't know. 
You never knew the man. You thought you knew him, but you never knew him. He told you, go to uh, 1 John chapter 1. Matter of fact, 1 John chapter 2. They don't even know that 1 John trying to say they but. And they're too prideful to accept it. They ain't going to admit that they never knew him. You'll never see a Christian admit, you know what? I sinned today. That means I never knew God. My whole life I thought I was a good Christian. I never knew the man. They don't know that just admitting that say they darn life. But no, they got the pride. I knew God. Let me tell you, just because you sin once, see God, God, like God ain't that hard. Just because you sin once, God just don't forget all the good that you did. What Bible you read? Grab, after we grab me Ezekiel. I'm on I'm on uh first John chapter uh two, give me verse three. First John chapter two, verse three. Grab me Ezekiel, they're gonna be like, that's because he is the son of God. This well, Jesus came here. It's saying the same thing Ezekiel told you. Matter of fact, it worked. At least Ezekiel just said, God forgot, forgot what you did. You know what I'm saying? This saying, boy, you ain't never knew God. You know what I'm saying? Look at this. This is 1 John chapter 2, verse 4. He that says, I know him. Give me verse 2. Give me verse 3. He, okay. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He said, This is how we know that we know him. If we keep his commandments. Keep going. He that says I know him and keeps not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. If I say I know him and I don't keep his commandments, guess what I am? A liar. And guess what the truth is? Not in you. Somewhere else. So now, if we go back to Hebrews, it told you the ones that have received, if you willfully sin, after that you have received the knowledge of the truth, right? And it just told you, you, you don't give a commandment, you a liar and the truth ain't in you. So that means you didn't receive it, right? They don't even know that's saving their darn life. That's, that's telling them, okay, a sacrifice still remains for you then. You sin. You don't keep his commandments. Therefore, you didn't know him. So a sacrifice still remains for you then. They don't even realize it, but they too prideful to accept it. So they running around and the most high God trying to sprinkle the blood on them. And the whole time they died. They just sitting there. God, nothing like the darn matrix. Right? The whole time they just get by. How are you going to save them? You stopping them from saving them. But nobody going to teach the people this. Everybody going to teach. Everybody going to I mean, just, just try your hardest. God knows your heart. Yeah, okay. He know a whole lot of stuff. It ain't about what he know. What do you know? It's John chapter 9, verse uh, 30 something. John chapter 9, verse 39. John chapter 9, <coughs> verse 39. It's important that we understand this stuff. And Yahshua said, For judgment I am come into this world that they which seek not might see. Uh huh. He said, For judgment I come into the world that the ones that see not, they might see. If you're blind, I'm trying to make sure you see. Right? Keep going. And that they which see might be made blind. But in the ones that, that see, I'm doing it so that I can blind your darn butt. Keep going. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Right? Pharisees looking at him, I think I get what you're trying to say right now. You trying to call us blind? Pharisees looking at him like, All right, boy, what you, you know what I'm saying? Trying to take a little subliminal shot. You calling us blind? Are we blind also? Look what Yahushua sure said. And Yahushua sure said unto them, you were blind, you should have no sin. But now you say we see, therefore your sin remains. I got that. All you got to do is admit you didn't know what you were talking about. All you got to admit that what you what you thought you were doing was, was right was actually wrong. That's all you got to admit. Most of all, I can help you at that point. Just admit you were blind. Too much pride. People ain't going to admit it. People ain't going to admit it. Let me sin tomorrow. Ain't gonna be, ain't gonna be no fun. 
listen, my whole this whole time I've been teaching Bible on the video, valuable stuff. A lot of it is probably right. Let me tell you something. I ain't no God. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. I ain't no God. I was a liar and the truth wasn't in me. But I'm going to sit here and try to act like the book telling me that. That's the one out I got. The book telling me that. And I'm, I got too much pride to say it. Not a book, right? I don't care what you thought about it. I don't care how, how great you thought I was. I, I was a liar. The truth wasn't in me. I didn't keep the commandments, did I? Oh, okay. Books say I'm a liar. The truth wasn't in me. I agree with that. I wouldn't tell you to say nothing against the book. I wouldn't tell you to believe nothing against the book, even if it's me. That's crazy. What I'm going to do? I'm going to trick God and get in. If we got one way of tricking God, what's that? Put on Yahushua. Act like the darn son. You act like Yahushua, you can trick God. That's the only way you can trick him. He mess around and think you actually his son. Right? That's the only way you can trick Other than that, your butt done. Your butt darn done. Let's get back into Exodus. All right? So he sprinkled the blood onto the people. This is Exodus chapter 24. Exodus chapter 24. Give me back up to verse 11. Some people ain't going to be taught this stuff. We left off what, 12? Eight. We left off with 8? Uh, Alright, give me 8 then. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant which the Lord has made with you concerning all these words. Uh huh. Then one of Moses and Aaron made happen to buy you and 70 of the elders of Israel. Mm -hmm. And they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved the work of a sapphire stone, mm -hmm. as it were, the body of heaven in its clearness. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also, they saw God mm -hmm. and did eat and drink. Mm -hmm. and the Lord so he said, he said, also, they said, also, they what? Saw God. So who they see? Y'all sure told us last week, he said, you've never seen his form or heard his voice. I'm trying to figure out who they saw. Had to be y'all sure. All right, it had to be. Ain't no way it could have been any, anybody different. All right? Then after that, what they do? And did eat and drink. After that, then they ate and drink. Why was it important that they ate and drink? Seal the covenant. God sealed the covenant. All right? Had to seal the covenant by eating and drinking. All right? No different than what we've seen previously. Grab uh, John chapter 19. John 19 just going to tell us it was finished. And the Most High God going to uh, uh, allow y'all sure to drink and he's die. We don't need John 19. Give me Genesis 31. We'll go back first. So we covered this already. Genesis 31. This is talking about Laban and, uh, Laban and Jacob. When Jacob ran away and escaped, Laban hotly pursued him. Genesis chapter 31, verse 44. Genesis chapter 31, verse 44. Now therefore, come thou, let us make a covenant, I and thou, and let it be for a witness between me and thee. All right? Me and thee is rep uh, referring to uh, Laban and referring to Jacob. They're making a covenant to one another. Watch what they do. And Jacob took a stone and set it up for a pillar. Mm -hmm. And Jacob said unto his brethren, gather stones. And they took stones and made a heap. Mm -hmm. And they did eat there upon the heap. Mm -hmm. And Laban called it Jagar Shahadutha. All right. So you see, they made a covenant, they sat down, and they ate. All right. That was a part of how we how we sealed our covenant. All right. We sealed it with a meal. All right. That's why when 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 they were up on the mount, they sprinkled the blood. Right. Every covenant gonna have some blood. Then when you seal that thing, it's time to eat. All right. That's how you know that thing is legit. They ate and they drank. All right? <clears throat> Same thing with Yahweh Shua. Watch this. Go to, uh, uh, go to Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. Verse 
chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22, I mean verse 16. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled. This is Yahushua talking. All right? They sat down. They just had the Passover meal. All right? Or they just ate for Passover, rather. All right? And he said, he said uh, I will not what? For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Keep going. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of, kingdom of God shall come. All right? So he's letting you know, for some reason, I'm not about to eat and I'm not about to drink until the kingdom of God comes. For some reason. I mean, he could have ate and drank right there. But he said, I'm not about to do it until the kingdom of God comes. That's because the covenant is not sealed yet. A lot of these Christians, they tell you, I'm a New Testament creature. I'm a new covenant creature. This, that, nothing. They don't even realize that thing ain't even sealed yet. New covenant ain't even, it ain't even enacted yet. It's not even a valid covenant at this point. You ain't even put the law in our minds and our hearts yet. No. No. That thing it ain't even a valid covenant. We're still working towards it. He just laying, I mean, y'all sure, all that was, he just died to lay the groundwork for the new covenant. That sacrifice had to be put down first, just like Moses. Right? For the world, Mo Moses had to make the sacrifice first. <coughs> Remember the order. The sacrifice came first, then he sprinkled the blood on the people. Right? What do you think it represented when, we, when, when the spirit fell on the people? Right? That, that's part of it. You know what I'm saying? That sacrifice has to go. Then after that, most high God come on back, y'all sure come on back. And he's gonna sit down and he's gonna eat with us. Right? That's when we sell the cover. That's when everything gonna be lit up. Alright, that's when we're gonna make it happen. Right, let's go to uh let's go to uh I thought I said I wanted Ezekiel. We ain't gotta get it though. Grab uh uh where was we at? Exodus twenty four eleven. Eleven now. It's Exodus chapter twenty four verse eleven. Verse 11. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel he laid not his hand, also they saw God and did eat and drink. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount and be there, and I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written. He said, I'll give you tables. Pay attention to him. Pay attention to what he said. He said, Come up here. I'm going to give you, listen to what he said. I'm going to give you tables of stone. What will be the tables of stone? Commandments, right? What we call the Ten Commandments, right? So the Ten Commandments, the first Ten Commandments that he spoke, that we know is what went on the table of the stone. Well, after that, he said, a what? A law? And right? Moses. He said, then a law, and the next thing he said is commandments. So a lot of people, they try to figure it out. They, a lot of people who opened up the Old Testament and read some of what we just read, they try to figure out what part of the law is done away with, what part of the law is still there. And you know, like Seventh-day Adventists and other groups, they come up with a bright idea. Ah, I get it. We only have to keep the Ten Commandments. Right? Everything else is done away with. Ten Commandments, that's the part that God spoke from his own mouth. This, that, nothing. They don't realize only reason he didn't speak all of it because the people couldn't handle it. It wasn't that it was, it was more right than the other one. People just couldn't handle it. Right? So they tried to figure it out. What should we keep? Ten Commandments. Okay, that's what it is. The rest of it is done away with it. That don't, that don't make no sense. Because the man just told you Ten Commandments was only a piece of it. He said, I gave you the tablets. That would be the Ten Commandments. Then after that, he said, oh, I ain't done yet. And I'm going to give you the law. And I'm going to give you the commandments. Mm -hmm. Right? That's the whole thing. So far, we only got part of it. He's telling them right now, I'm going to give you more. Right? I know I just spent all that time talking to you and giving you all the judgment you just read to the people. That's not it. Right? I'm going to give you more. 
Right? We have a whole lot of this book left. This is only the first part of the commandments. Right? Next, we're about to learn about, well, well actually, directly next, he's going to give them the designs of the tabernacle and all the stuff. We'll, we'll try to talk about that before we get out of here, actually. Because we're not going to read the details of those, not this time. All right? But we're going to, you know what I'm saying, we'll kind of go through everything that, that, he, that he tells us. All right? Maybe we'll touch on it a little bit next week. But you'll see that he's telling them there's more to come with this. Right? You got a lot more with this. Grab uh, Matthew chapter 19. So we can blow a hole with the quick theory real quick before we get out of here. This is Matthew chapter 19. This is what some of these people use to try to say, he taught them to you to only keep the Ten Commandments. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may eternal that I may have eternal life? He said, What can I do that's good to give me to have eternal life? Right? That's what we're looking for. We're trying to get the eternal life. So he's saying, What do I have to do? This is a very important question. Let's see what Yahushua said. He said unto him, why callest thou me good? He said, why you call me good, first of all? Yeah. You don't even know who I am. Right? You think I'm a regular man, you just gonna walk up and talk, call me good? He said, why? Let's see about it. There is none good but, the, but one that is God. Mm -hmm. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He said, if you want to enter into the life, guess what you gotta do? Keep the commandments. Why do you Christians don't tell us this? That's out of his own mouth. If you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. That's book. They ain't going to tell us that, though. You know what they're going to tell us? God don't care. Listen, it ain't nothing that you can do to make God love you more or less. That make a whole lot of sense. That make a whole lot of sense to what I just read. All right? But he said keep the commandments. So now you got like Seventh-day Adventists, other group, this, here, and there say, see, he's talking about the Ten Commandments. Let me prove it to you. Watch what he lists off. Which he said unto him, which? He said, which ones? And Yahushua said, thou shalt do no murder. That's the Ten Commandments, thou right? Thou shalt not commit adultery. That's the Ten Commandment too. Thou shalt not steal. Oh, that's the Ten Commandment too. Thou shalt not bear false witness. That's one of the Ten Commandments. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Oh, wait a minute. Honor thy father and their mother. That's the Ten Commandment too. That's five. That's five of the Ten Commandments. But what was that last one? thy neighbor as thyself. What number commandment is that? Right? That thing ain't no tenth commandment. Ain't no eleven in there now. We read the, we just read from Exodus chapter 20 all the way to Exodus chapter 24. And we never saw anything that said love your neighbor as yourself. What commandment is that? Some people try to tell you, you know, that's a New Testament commandment. See, that was Jesus' commandment. Wrong. That's in Leviticus. We ain't read it yet. We're going to get to it, though. That's in Leviticus. So that tells you that when he was given commandments, he wasn't talking about the Ten Commandments. Why he didn't mention the seven? Right? Why he didn't mention put no other God before me? Why he didn't mention don't make an idol? Why he didn't mention don't take his name in vain? Why, why he mention these? And why he throw this random one out there that's not any part of the Ten Commandments, nowhere near part of the Ten Commandments? That's Leviticus. Right? Because he wasn't talking about the commandments. He's telling you what you need to do to enter into life. Just like he said he was doing. He said, which one? He said, keep the commandments. Which ones? I'll tell you which one. You keep these, you'll be out. Let's see, keep reading. The young man said unto him, all these have I kept from my youth up. Mm -hmm. What lack I yet? He said, what do I lack yet? What did he say? And Yahushua said unto him, if thou will be perfect. He said, if thou will be what? Perfect. Go and tell that thou hast and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. Y'all should try to teach him how to be perfect. He said, uh, all this stuff I've done since my youth. Y'all should like, all right, let me teach you how to be perfect. 
right? They ended up discouraging the young man. You know what I'm saying? He was like, man, I got to sell everything? He was like, I don't know about that. Tell him he's perfect, though. He did tell him. He said, if you want to be perfect, that's what you got to do. He was like, man, I don't know about that. Right? It's important that we understand these things. It wasn't impossible. No, it wasn't impossible. He just told him. He was like, man, you, this is what you got to do to enter into life. Man, I was like, man, I've been doing that since I was a young boy. Out his own mouth, he said he wasn't perfect. Right? Been doing that, he's like, You want to be perfect? I right, go sell everything. I'll show you some real nice stuff. Go sell, sell everything. He's like, Man, I don't know. That's a tough job. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. Just, just keeping the commandment, there ain't no like, we keep the commandment. That's just, you just barely getting in. You just got your foot in the door. You doing that? You want to be perfect? Ooh, that's a tough job there. Right? If you want to be perfect, that thing that requires a little bit more. Just keeping the commandment. A lot of people, you let these Christians tell it. I mean, you 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 just like be a right, a kind of almost righteous person in the Christian church. Then we oh, that's a strong. He a warrior. That's when they start calling him disciple. He's a disciple of God. You start doing something special. He's a disciple of God. I mean, he just rarely ever does anything wrong. Yo, but ain't even in there. You rarely ever do anything wrong. Yo, but still out. It ain't till you turn away from all sin. Then you just, I mean, you just got inside of the door. That's barely in there. And you want to be perfect? Oh, man. You have to serve the brother. You're going to have to sacrifice a whole lot of stuff. And you have to maintain righteousness while doing all of it. I mean, if you want to be perfect. That's why we ain't got no business boasting. Who we going to boast against? The sinner? For what? Killing time, you boasting against a sinner. Oh, you a sinner and I'm righteous. Oh, okay. Your boy's gonna lose. Most of I got gonna play that stuff. You looking for humility. Real humility. Not that fake stuff these people be talking about either. It's Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12, I'm sorry, Exodus chapter uh, 24, verse 12. Sorry about that. It's Exodus chapter 24, verse 12. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount, and be there, and I will give thee the tables of stone and the law and commandments which I have written, that you may teach them. Right, so he told him, most like God told him, come on up to me in, in the mount. I'm gonna give you the law, and I'm gonna give. You, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna give you the, the table of the stone. I'm gonna give you the law, and I'm gonna give you the commandment. So he's telling him, I'm about to give you more. I just gave you some. I'm about to give you a whole lot more. Come on back up here in the mount. Right, and he just gave him. Moses came down. So Moses spoke to the Most High God after they told him to speak to him and bring back the word. He came back down. He explained all these words to the people. He entered the covenant with him, had the meal, and after that, the Most High God was like, all right, I got more to tell you. So now he's about to go back up. Watch this. And Moses rose up and his minister, Yahushua, and Moses went up into the Mount of God. Right? He said he went up into the Mount of God for how long? And he said unto the elders, Tarry ye here for us, wait until we come again unto you. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. If any man have any matters to do, let them come unto them. Right? So he left Aaron in charge. Right? He said, Aaron and her, they with you. If anybody got any matter, you take it to them. So he left Aaron in charge. Watch this. And Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount. And mm -hmm. the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai. Uh huh. And the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Uh huh. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of Israel. Uh huh. And Moses, went into the, and Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up into the mount. And Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. So imagine you looking at that. You just see this devouring fire at the top of a mountain. You see a bunch of black smoke. And you see Moses like inching kind of closer to that thing. So I was like, he's just disappearing in the smoke. What you going to think will happen to Moses? That boy just killed himself. Right? But I mean, you kind of got a little faith because it's like, I did see some amazing stuff over this last couple months. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, I mean, just, just three, four months ago, we came out of Egypt. Water split. 
You know what I'm saying? Moses was doing all types of crazy stuff. So I know Moses, you know what I'm saying? He's good for it. So you hold out. You like, that boy just killed himself. And you kind of come to your sense like, no, nah, he ain't killing stuff. You know what I'm saying? Most high God talking to him up there. We did just see some crazy stuff today. Then he up in there for 40 days and 40 nights. All right? Remember, they don't know how long he's going to be up there. All they know is he walked into that plant. All right? They don't really know how long. They just looking for, okay, he'll be out any minute now. And you go to sleep and wake up, and he's still in there. You know what I'm saying? You go to sleep and wake up again, and the man still in there. You get to about day 35, and it's like, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? No water, no nothing. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I ain't seen Mo. Y'all seen Mo? I ain't seen Mo either. That flame still over there, though. That thing still burning. I don't think nobody can make it out of that. Right? Yeah. Y'all seen Mo? That still burning. I don't think nobody can make it out of that. Right? Whole time, Moses in there, you know what he's learning about? Most I got teaching him. He said, uh, go, go grab uh, chapter 25. Keep reading. Real quick. We'll, 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 we'll just start off here and then we'll come back and we'll look at it next week. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me an offering of every man that gives it willingly with his heart. He shall take an offering. Right? So this is what Moses is, uh, this is what the Most I got is speaking to Moses at the top of the mount. The rest of the people can't hear this. Right? So he's like, this is what you're going to say to them. Tell them that they all got to bring an offering. And they do it out of a willing heart. Let's hear about it. And this is the offering which shall take, which ye shall take of them. Gold and silver and brass. And blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair. Wait, where did they get all of the goat's hair and the gold and the silver and the brass from? From the Egyptians. From the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. Remember the most high. So God said, you're going to come out with a whole lot of stuff. Right? They asked for the Egyptians. The Egyptians just like, here, take it. You go. I mean, just get out. You just killed my baby. Right? The firstborn. Like, all the Egyptians were going there like, man, you take whatever you want. Y'all just leave, man. All these plays get to kicking our butt. Y'all just here. Take whatever you need. Go here. Go on. You need blue. Here. Go on. Just go. Just silver. Oh, here. Go on. Just go. Right? So now that's how they got all the stuff. Now the most high God was like, if you got a willing heart, just bring it. So the people were willing to do it. Keep going. And ram skins dyed red, and badger skins, and shittim wood. Oil for the light, spices for anointing oil, and for sweet uh, incense. Mm -hmm. Onyx stones, and stones to be set in the ephod, and in the breastplate. Mm -hmm. And let them make a sanctuary, make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Alright, so he's telling them, these are all the things I'm going to need. He's trying to give, give Moses, these are all the offerings I'm going to need. Alright, over the next few chapters, all from about chapter 25... To about chapter 31, he goes over how to build an ark, right? And by ark, not the boat, the ark, um, but an ark like a, like a container. It's like a box, all right? So I had to build a box. The box got like a, a chair, two chair of them at the top, right? And this is where the Most High God, uh, this is where the Most High God spoke to Moses, all right? After this was built, all right? They called it the mercy seat that was at the top, all right? And after that, he taught them how to build a, a table. And this table had our bread on top of it, right? We would put it in the middle of the, of the tabernacle, right? So he brought a, brought a, uh, he taught us how to uh, build a, a table. And then after that, uh, the candlestick, all right? And the candlestick, you had a whole bunch of candles on there. We would light them and keep them lit. You know what I'm saying? All that also went inside the front room of our, our tabernacle, right? So all lit. Let me see if I can draw this. See if I can draw this a little better. You got our tabernacle. That's another thing that he's gonna teach him how to build. You got our tabernacle right here. So we have we have like a gate around our tabernacle. The inside of this gate, you know what I'm saying. Then you have the actual tabernacle. Then inside the tabernacle, you have a divide with a room in it. You know what I'm saying. This is like a little opening so you can walk through. So the ark, you know what I'm saying, with the cherubim on top, would be about right there. You know what I'm saying. Then, in the front room, you got the table with the showbread on it, right? And all our little bread is on there right here. You know what I'm saying? Then you got the candlestick, you know what I'm saying? That's how these people say it look, you know what I'm saying? All right? So what else we working with? We, uh, we got the table stick. Uh, we got the altar. So the altar would be right out here out front, all right? It would be just like that. So this is the entrance. 
understand the entrance to to our tabernacle. Remember, all this is portable. You know what I'm saying? So it's all this is like it got poles on it, so anybody can just lift it up and just start walking with it. Because remember, we in the middle of the wilderness. You know what I'm saying? Our whole tabernacle it breaks down. You know what I'm saying? It's just like a bunch of long curtains over it. So you got you got this infrastructure, and then you lay a whole bunch of curtains over it, and that's all it was—just a big old tent, pretty much, right? But it looked nice. And then this part, it all breaks down too. It's just a big gate. You break it on down, right? We'll talk about who carried it when we was walking and all that stuff too. So you got the altar, then you also got the uh, the tabernacle court. So that's the that's the part that goes all the way around. You got the ephod. We'll talk about the ephod, but the ephod is like a, a article of clothing that the priest will wear. Then you also got the breastplate. That's an article of clothing that the priest will wear. Um, the robe and the altar of burnt incense. And that also goes in here. You know what I'm saying? It's like a little, you know what I'm saying? A little thing where you, you know what I'm saying? You burn incense on. Right? So all this stuff is in there. The only thing is in there is the ark. And we don't talk about what went inside the ark and all that stuff. We'll get to all that in history. But this is what he's trying to, he's showing, he's showing Moses. He's explaining Moses to this. But watch how he say he explains it. Keep going. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Uh huh. According to all that I show thee. After According the, to what? All that I show thee, after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall you make. He said, after all that I show you, right? So he's teaching Moses. This is how it's supposed to look. I'm about to show you exactly how I want you to make this thing, right? He said, after all that I show you. Then after that, this is what he spent the 40 days and 40 nights hearing from God. Most high God is breaking it down to him. I want it to be this long. And I want it to have this in it. And you put this with it. And put it this way. He's giving them detailed instructions about how to build it. Literally, based off of what we read, we could build everything that the Most High God has given us. He gives it exactly and gives the structure for everything to be built. We ain't going to do that because we, you know we ain't messing with the Most High God holy stuff. You know what I'm saying? We, don't, we ain't got no time to do that stuff. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? We ain't messing with that. But just based off of it, you could, right? You could see exactly how everything is laid out because that's how detailed the instructions are. It's the most I got just doing it right off the top of the dome. Listen, this is how long I want it to be. This is how it be. And Moses had to retain that. Then he had to bring it back to the people, right? So 40 days, 40 nights is what you're hearing. Remember, it's about day 35. I'm just making that up in terms of day 35. But as you get closer to that 40 days, 40 nights, the people like no, so we gonna kind of we gonna kind of read into that too. Uh, we'll try to get into it. We'll talk we'll talk a little bit more about uh, about some of the, the, the priestly stuff uh, like the ephod and the breastplate and, and all that. Um, and then we'll go into what happened when Moses came on back down. All right, any questions?